Hi everyone, my name is Dan McCrae. I am the Director of Academic Support at the Center for Distance Learning at SUNY Empire State College. And today um, we're going to talk about the psychology of action and how to overcome procrastination. So procrastination is one of those things where it's, it's a big problem for a lot of people. And because it's such a big problem, um, there's a lot of research and um, literature and, and why we procrastinate, how we procrastinate, and more importantly, how to overcome procrastination. Um, so, so today we're going to talk about some of the, the new research that will help us understand why we procrastinate and also um, some powerful techniques that have come out over the last few years that can help us um, go a long way towards overcoming procrastination. Um, Procrastination is one of those things where when you understand the mechanism of how we procrastinate, that alone can be a powerful a way to overcome procrastination. And also um, the techniques that they're coming out with, I think, um, are really powerful and can help a lot of people uh, overcome procrastination. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, so procrastination is a problem for a lot of people, like I said, at least 15 to 20 percent of just people in general um, are chronic procrastinators. And w when you talk about college students, that number jumps up to 80, 85 percent. So it's a huge problem for college students. Uh, I think, you know, co in college, there's just a lot more opportunities to procrastinate. So I think that's one of the reasons. Um, and, you know, the problem with, with being a chronic procrastinator is that procrastination can develop into a habit. And if it develops into a habit, there are all sorts of negative consequences from that. Um, the research shows that people who procrastinate on a regular basis have lower achievement levels. Um, they have lower grade point averages. Uh, they have a lot more negative feelings. So they, they feel depressed and anxious, stressed out a lot more. Um, they report more health problems. So they get sick more often. They go to the doctors more often. They also report more relationship problems and also uh, financial problems. So when procrastination becomes uh, kind of a habitual way of dealing with things, it can really develop into a problem for people. So that's why um, learning how to overcome procrastination can become such an important thing. So one of the things I think that's really helpful to start with is to, to define procrastination. So Pierce Steele, he's a, a researcher into procrastination. His definition of uh, procrastination is that it's the voluntary postponement of an intended course of action despite having the opportunity, opportunity to act and expecting to be worse off as a result of the delay. Uh, Peter Golwitzer, who is probably one of the most, uh, most foremost uh, researchers into procrastination, um, and he's a psychologist out of NYU. Um, he defines uh, procrastination with four criteria. So you have to meet each one of these four criteria in order to be procrastinating. So the first thing is you have to be committed to a goal. The second thing is you have to have the opportunity to act on a goal. The third is you have to expect to be worse off later if you don't do the action. And then the fourth thing is you have to voluntarily to decide to put the action off. So um, as Timothy Pitchell points out in his great book, uh, Solving the Procrastination Puzzle, um, number two is really the key here. You have to have the opportunity to act on the goal in order for it to be procrastination. Um, so sometimes, you know, in life, um, we have lots of obligations. Um, you know, we might be going to school. Um, we might have children. We might have a family, a job, a lot of other um, responsibilities that we have to deal with. And um, sometimes, you know, if you are doing some important family things, like let's say you're taking care of your kids, you're making sure that they get dinner at night, you're making sure they get their homework done, um, those things can get in the way of, of uh, schoolwork and, and, and get in the way of things that we want to get done for school. But because those things get in the way, it doesn't mean that you're procrastinating. You're actually doing something that, you know, is an obligation that you have to do in order to take care of your children. So that's not really procrastination. And sometimes um, when we have these kind of obligations, whether it's family or work, um, and it can get in the way of um, some of the other important things that we want to do, like a paper or studying for a test or reading uh, a chapter in our, our textbook, um, that's, that's, you know, we can beat ourselves up about that, but it's not procrastination. Procrastination 
is when we have the opportunity to act. And when we don't have the opportunity to act because we're doing some important obligation, that's not procrastination. So that's important to, to remember. So I thought um, it might be a good idea for you to pause the, the video here and take a few minutes and think about some reasons that you procrastinate and just kind of jot them down um, and see what kind of things uh, lead you to procrastination. And take about two or three minutes and do that and then we'll come back um, and talk more about some of the reasons we procrastinate. Okay. All right, so hopefully you've come up with some some reasons why we we procrastinate and um, there are tons of reasons that people procrastinate and you could spend a lot of time going through uh, books and research um, you know articles about why we procrastinate and and the reasons we procrastinate and I think um, I tried to narrow down to five main reasons that we procrastinate um, so the and hopefully the reasons that you came up with um, I'll address those in these these five reasons um, if I don't you know you can send me an email and let me know and we can we can talk more about it through email um, and and see if there are some other things that uh, that I can help you with um, so there are five kind of main reasons that we procrastinate I think um, the first one is poor metacognition and this has to do with how we make predictions and how we make judgments and sometimes the predictions and judgments we, we make aren't very accurate and they're not very good judgments and um, procrastinators tend to have very poor predictions and and sometimes make pretty bad judgments and so that's that's what metacognition is about uh, metacognition means that we're thinking about thinking and so when we make a prediction about how long um, an essay is going to take to write that's metacognition um, and procrastinators tend to make mistakes when they when they do those things so we'll talk more about that um, as, as we go along um, the second thing which is kind of related to metacognition is um, poor prioritization and so this has to do with how sometimes the priorities that we give things um, they can kind of lead us to almost unconsciously procrastinate. So if we um, prioritize something low that, you know, we think we have lots of time to work on and we don't make it a high priority, we can almost kind of um, accidentally procrastinate, not even realize it. So that's, that's another thing that happens when people procrastinate. And so we're going to talk about how to make sure that our priorities are accurate and that they're not um, leading us into, into, um, you know unconscious procrastination the third thing is called task aversion and so this is just where you know a task is unpleasant and we don't really want to do the task and uh, even thinking about the task um, can lead to procrastination and lead to unpleasant feelings um, and so we're going to talk about that and there's actually some really exciting um, new research into the brain that helps us understand this and also helps us overcome uh, this uh, this reason for procrastination so we'll talk about that um, the fourth one and this is really uh, kind of the key work that Peter Goldwitzer has done and um, what he found is that people who procrastinate on a, on a regular basis usually don't have pl uh, plans and so his his term for plans are implementation intentions and we'll talk more about that and we'll talk about how to make sure that we have implementation intentions so that we don't procrastinate and then um, the last thing is just fear of failure and um, this is a big one for people um, you know a lot of times that fear of being judged either by our professor or by our peers um, that is an unpleasant thing you know that that kind of fear of judgment and so when we think about doing a unpleasant difficult task a lot of times we imagine not doing well in that task and that can kind of stop us from from doing our activities so that's that's a big one and we'll talk we'll talk about that as well 